Hey everybody, Stephen and John from Davenridge European Martial Arts School. Welcome back to the Sword Fighting School. Today what I want to do is I want to talk about the fallacy of instant kill. Could it happen? Yes. Is it probable? Probably not. I mean, uh, I mean not a good thing, but I don't know if you heard about this. One of the muckety mucks in Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. was shot in the head in London. I did not hear about this. This just happened. She's in the hospital. She's not dead. She got shot in the head by a gun and she's still alive. Yeah. So what we wanted to do today was talk about the fallacy of instant kills. One of my favorite sayings, and I want you to jump in at any time yeah, with this. One of my favorite sayings is dying is a long ways from dead. Let's say John sticks his knife, theoretically, theoretically, into my chest. Do you see how quickly he pulled that thing out? So I think I do he, not get excited <laughs> at all about this proposition. Not in the least. He hits me in the chest and stabs me in the heart. Right. Ah. We have documentation of people getting into bar fights, being stabbed in the heart, and running three blocks before they drop dead. So he hits me in the heart, direct shot to the heart. I've got 30 seconds About, yeah. to decide if I'm going to lay down and go quietly into that sweet night, or if I'm going to take him with me. I never expect one shot to finish it. We were doing a video the other day uh, that we just posted about tomahawk and knife. And you come through and you drive your knife into his armpit. Hit the brachial plexus, take out that nerve cluster, potentially go into the chest cavity, puncture a lung, potentially even right into the heart from the armpit. Or down through the clavicle, again, potentially, directly through the lung into the heart. Yeah. And this is an exaggerating tool. This is a large yeah. tool in that area. We may not have something like this, but we can still see. Most people, if you're carrying a knife on your side, it's going to be closer to this size. I'll let you do that again. Okay. So what we're looking at here then, is we're looking at a tool going so, in no, through the Let's pull it back a little bit. There we go. About, say, there, because we're going to get stuck to the yeah. ribs and everything like that. So it would go through the lung. Yeah, definitely the lung. Hit and, some major arteries. Yeah, maybe take out the aorta. Yeah. Going straight go down. Yeah, straight down. We're about definitely taking thing. out the lung. Absolutely the lung. And again, if I go at an angle, angle it more towards the center. All right, about. Uh, let's not do it that there. way. Let's do it that way. Yeah. Again, yes. taking out an artery. Easily. Esophagus. Yes. Right. So even with a shorter knife, it could, thank you. It could very well do that job. But just because you put it into their chest cavity, their heart, their lung, doesn't mean they're going to lay down quietly and go. If I stick my knife into John's lung, it's going to take you a while. It's going to take him a while to drown in his own blood. It'll take me some time, yeah. I may have struggles with breathing. I may be getting winded faster, but that doesn't mean I have stopped especially if we're in the heat of a moment. And this is something I'm used to, is this adrenaline dump. Yeah, oh yeah. This is a really important factor that I like to talk about as well here, is if you're, your body's used to this adrenaline dump from your training and your actions, then now you're in a place where that may not be felt, but your processing can still be done. Having, I've done sword fighting for 30 plus years which means I've been stabbed more than once. And I will say unequivocally, I dislike being stabbed. But being stabbed in the middle of a fight feels more like you've just been punched. Can I hit yep. you? That's what it sounds and feels like. Yep. You don't even necessarily know that it's been punctured. There was another story of I think it was in Russia. A woman was coming back from work and she got home and 
her husband or boyfriend is there at the house and she walks in and she's angry and mad and he's like, what's wrong, honey? And she says, I got mugged at the train station. They took her purse. And she takes off her jacket and there's a knife sticking out of the back of her head. Or no, I'm sorry, the back of her neck. Back of her neck, like right here. She didn't even know that she'd been stabbed. She was so angry about being mugged, she didn't know that she'd been stabbed. In the back of the neck, you would think that would, you know, our, uh, much of our training tells us, oh, that's gonna paralyze them. Obviously, it didn't paralyze her. I saw another video of a knife fight in, I believe it was Mexico City, where two guys argued over a parking spot. Great reason to stab oh, somebody. Yeah. Uh, two guys were arguing over a parking spot. One drew a knife and stabbed the other guy in the eyeball. And it went through his eye, into his head, and stayed there. The cop comes to take the uh, report of this fight. Can you imagine being this police officer? So, senor, holy wood. Are you okay? Yeah. He didn't know he had a knife sticking out of his face. All of these things happen. If John, go ahead and draw your knife. Uh -huh. And he's going to drive it right into my rib, right into my armpit. So he's coming in this way. No, more this way, because I want you to drive it. Sure. In. You want it into your chest. Yeah, go good. ahead. I'm, uh, so just to I'm the just front. Right here, and it's going to be worse. Yeah, so this is what's coming at me. Go ahead and do it again. Mm -hmm. And he's successful, but I turn. Now he's just severed this muscle. And my big pectoral. So yeah, there's a lot of damage done, but I'm still here and able to write and do whatever. You bastard. Ah! Yeah, and that's an important thing to keep in mind because when we see these things about one shot kills and everything there, I'm aiming to put the damage all the way up into this space here, twist it around, pull it on out. Okay, have a slushy come out yeah. here. This isn't happening in a vacuum in a place there where this other person, we come running into this spot here. We're in an agreement. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna be moving too. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be that he comes through and I drive it here and it goes into my side. Let's turn. Mm -hmm. It goes into my side, through my side and out the back. Yep. Yeah. We have many documented cases of duels in the 16th and 17th century with rapiers, daggers, Jim Bowie, guns, people that are taking just unimaginable damage and continuing the fight. Uh, one story that I remember reading of a duel was two guys were fighting with rapier and dagger. One of them and put it through him, and the coroner's report said through and through at nipple height, right through his chest, all the way out the back. He, came, as I retracted, he came forward and jumped on me, right, took me to the ground, and starts stabbing me with his knife. The whole time this guy's on the ground, being stabbed about the head and neck, with the other guy's dagger. This guy on the ground is biting and he actually gnawed off the tip of this guy's chin. The guy on the ground died. Not from the stab wounds, he choked on the end of that guy's chin. This guy with the through and through, I, I think he died too, but not for a couple days. Took him a while, fire call. So, this whole idea of going down right away, one shot, one kill, you got a 50 caliber? Yes. Absolutely. But only if you hit them. <laughs> yeah. And if they're moving and they're doing all this and you're using a bladed weapon or a pole arm or a staff, it's going to be very difficult. There's another story that I remember reading, uh, no, being told about by an ER doc who teaches Western martial arts out in the Midwest. Uh, this was written in a medical manuscript from the 16th century. There was a guy who was notorious for cheating at gambling. 
and they were in war camp sitting around the fire gambling and one of them one of the guys got fed up with the cheater got up and just hit him in the head with a halberd just planted it in his head and then pulls it out and the guy gets up holding on to his head and then goes over to the doctor's tent I think it was Galen I think that yeah. was the doctor's name um, it was either Galen was the doctor then or Galen I don't remember if Galen was the Roman doctor, but this doctor studied the Roman doctor, and he was um, referencing the Roman and Greek doctors for physiology. So this guy takes a shot right to the, right to the top of the skull with a halberd, plants it in his head, walks himself to the doctor's tent. Doctor looks at him and says, Basically, sorry, buddy, you're probably going to die. And the guy's like, it hurts, do something. So he says, okay, the old masters, they told us, pack the wound, wrap it up, and hope for the best. That's all we can do. So he did that and then sent him back to his tent. The next day, this guy sends one of his friends to the doctor with a message that it hurts really badly. Do something. Please take the pain. Help me with the pain. And the doc said, there's nothing I can do. The old masters say that if I unwrap this, you're going to die. The next day, he sends his whore to the doctor's tent. And she says, my man says it hurts really bad. You got to do something. And he's like, I can't. If I unwrap it, the old masters say that if I take the padding out and I unwrap it, he's going to die. The next day, he walks back to the doctor's tent. We're looking at three days after being hit in the head by Halbert and having it split open into the brain cavity. He walks back to the doctor's tent and says, it hurts really bad. You got to do something. And Doc says, I can't unwrap it and unpack it because if I do, you're going to die. And the guy's like, I don't care. You got to do something. And so he's like, basically, all right, be it upon your head, as it were. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and so the guy, the doc, unwraps it, unpacks it, and then the patient dies. But we're looking at three days after having his head split open by a halberd in the 16th century. The idea of a one, ki one hit, one kill, not going to happen. Even if it is fatal, doesn't mean it's going to happen now. It's absolutely. It may be something that might slow somebody down, if you ever want to think on something like that. But it's the concept there that you're going to take it all out in one shot. I'm going to boom, 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 pop, and then walk away. And you're going to keel over. That's not going to happen. Yeah. You can't assume that that's going to happen. The we want to stay alive as a species, as a person there. We want to keep moving. The, and it goes the other way, too. Yeah. Uh, we've been trained through media, movies, books, TV, that when something happens, there's this response. I remember reading an article about a guy in the Midwest oh, that no. went into rob a convenience store and he had a gun and the guy at the convenience store the clerk pulled out a shotgun racked it and pulled the trigger and the guy goes flying back through the plate glass window just like we see in the movies the problem the gun misfired he went flying back because he's been trained that that's what happens when you get shot by media and so he did it to himself. So we can either be trained to lay down and go quietly with one hit, or I'm not done yet. And we see this in Shakespeare as well. Yep. In Romeo and Juliet, when Tybalt and Mercutio are fighting, you know, uh, Romeo jumps in between them. Guys, guys, this is going to get us into a lot of trouble. We better not do that. Mercutio gets stabbed in the chest by Tybalt and stumbles back and falls to the ground and Romeo runs up to him and I'm gonna paraphrase here guys 
he runs up to his best friend and goes, dude, are you okay? Or something like that. Close enough. Shakespeare wouldn't mind, right? No, not at all. <laughs> or all the Shakespearean actors out there. I apologize. I apologize a lot for that. Anyways, Mercutio says, "'Tis not as deep as a well, nor as wide as church doors, but twill do. If you look for me tomorrow, you shall find me a grave man. Tomorrow he'll be dead. That doesn't mean you've taken the fight out of him now. We also have documentation of police and others getting shot in the chest by large caliber weapons and continuing the fight. Just because you hit them doesn't, doesn't mean you hit them perfectly, and it doesn't mean they're done fighting. Where's the best place to stab somebody? In the back. Why? Because that way they can't stab you back. And it takes longer to get there. Mm -hmm. Why that's important to us, if we take this to what we teach here at, at the sword fighting school, is not, we do one-on-one, -on -one, but we also train for battlefield, multiple opponent. If John and two or three of his best friends are out to get me for whatever reason. Unfortunately, we see a lot of this going on nowadays. I don't want to stay here in the fight. I need to get to his back because behind his back is my avenue of escape. So if John comes at me and he's got his friend here and his friend here, and he comes at me and I push that and I kick him in the knee and I elbow him there, I've now got a free run to get out of the way. If we take this to an example of, I'm not running away because I can't for whatever reason, he does that same thing, I go through here, I kick him at the knee, elbow him in the ribs, turn around, grab his hair, stick a knife in the back of his head, and then just leave it so I can go on to the next guy. I couldn't run away, yep. so I needed to finish it. Once I put it in there, I left him to drop, because if he's gonna drop, turn around for me. Mm -hmm. If I've grabbed his hair, and I pulled him back, and I drove a knife in there, and then I just drop him, he's gonna fall on that knife. Yep. Even if it doesn't do more damage, it's gonna slow him down. Everything in the fight is about time. How much time do you take? How much time did they take? How much time did you give them? How much time did they give you through their actions, through their confusion, through their hesitancy, through their anger? I need to understand how time is going to be affected by injuries, not whether or not they're just gonna drop down right then. Anything you'd like to add? No, that about covers it. I, think. I don't have anything more to give. Yeah. yeah, so not right now. But anyways, we just wanted to talk to you about the fallacy of one hit, one kill. Sounds great in movies and books, but realistically, it can happen. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot less common than what you would think. Right? Absolutely. So with all that, I want to say thank you for joining us you liked what you saw today, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button down here at the bottom somewhere and tell your friends about this channel. We are coming up on 2,000 subscribers. Help us break the 2,000 mark. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you for everything. You're very welcome. Take care, everyone. All the best, you guys. Take care.